As always, when we show things to people who are far away, you will put a mask on it and make it look nice on the edges. Soft edge, well, I think, how do you call this in? What's the proper name for this in, in English? And of course it's called a soft edge because a soft edge is something you do to two images to make it one big seamless image. Well, soft edges, how are they created and uh, do we need them? I think we do need them. Just like taking off the edges from a table to make it more comfortable or fading out the music at the end so people think it's kind of seamlessly connecting with the rest of the show. So let's pretend this is the image we're going to project and for some inexplicable reason somebody is corner pinning our content. Maybe they are just trying to map it to something or the result is the same whatever the intentions. We have those stairs and we don't want those stairs. So naturally we would create a mask around our content and make it soft. And because this feathering doesn't really work, because we can still see the edges, we have to move in the mask a little. So now we're going in from zero to gradually 100% alpha. But it still looks dull and linear and we don't want that because it's a vivid image and we want it to be vivid. So we could use a handmade mask that is taking into account how the image looks like. So perhaps those rays they go a little further out and maybe here we see less and after all maybe all this is kind of wavy and um, amorphous as we would like it to be. And now we feather the whole thing and it kind of looks okay, but it's uh, like somebody wanted but really didn't know how to do it. So maybe it's better we use a straight color instead of an image to just see what's happening. Let's turn off the corner pinning for a second and let's put a mask on this red layer. Let's create a new layer in black. Let's call it mask. And let's mask it. Create a mask, turn it to subtract. And here we go. This is the hole in a black mask, which we can't see because it has no pixels to display. If you double M, you can see all the properties of the mask and we can pull in a little what we might call our passepartout. And now we can feather it and we have still the same boring linear degrado from 0 to 100% red. We don't really want that so still if you wanted to give this mask a little more waviness. It would still look linear on the edges. So let's create something that has a little structure on it. Maybe we want this mask to be a little more organic, uh, painted in a way. Create a new layer and call it noise and as you can probably guess, so here's some fractal noise. If you ever looked into the different kinds of noise, you might have found out that there are some specific changes and they are made within the noise. So let's go for the dynamic and just make it a little bigger so we can see what's happening here. And now dive into the subsettings. Try that just to find out what's happening. And to give it a little brush stroke like look, we could actually use something like that also go for the twist and get a little more wavy but I like the electric discharge like image like this and let's just scale it up a little and 
Now we're using this noise as the foundation for our mask. As you can see, it's not really working out because um, right now we are going from hard edges in a somehow noisy thing into soft. So let's change that. Let's give it a passepartout around and make this passepartout be our outer edge. Just punch a hole in the middle, pull in a little and feather the whole thing a little. Now, in addition to this linear thing, we have something that might be a kind of structure. Let's dive into the noise and play around with the contrast and brightness a little. And now we're creating the illusion of something sort of cut off. Just give the noise a little more play. Pull this in a little. And soften it. Just a little. So we are losing these hard edges, these linear edges up, up there. And then we can actually pull this out a little. Just like so. I admit. It's a little tacky and a little overdone, but if you play around with it and just make it work on your image, then maybe it looks kind of organic. Kind of. Just play around with the values of your noise and maybe you find something that is compliant with your image. And then you can also animate it by giving your evolution a little expression. Something like that. Go. If you really wanted to overdo the whole thing, why don't you just duplicate the couple and make that mask grow in a little further, but feathering it out a lot more while having the noise do something completely different. Maybe this can add some life to your border and make it a little less linear and boring. So here we are with our artistically enhanced soft edge. Now what? The easiest way would be to punch out our red and just superimpose it over our image and then render it out, bake it into our footage. Which is a bad solution because now all your footage has this frame around it and if you want to use the footage on another background, maybe you don't want this in there so we have to re-render it, but maybe there's a better solution. Let's turn the background to white and let's use this as an image for a mask in QLab. So let's export a JPEG. Uh, maybe you find a new solution for your naming because uh, soft edge 10000 might not be what you wanted. And now in QLab we choose the surface that we have and apply our new mask to the surface. Let's have a look at it. Here we go. For any other program than QLab, maybe you need some alpha channel. So just punch out the whole white thing and export it as a PNG with alpha. Done. So now you have a mask that you can apply to any image in any software. Perhaps you play around with the noises or just find some new textures to apply. And if you want to, I will make a tutorial on how to apply a hand-drawn mask onto your images in the next one. Just subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.